But for a dream by your nomad soul. You're in a room that reminds you of a dream you want to forget. The walls are white, but the light makes them seem a little blue. You're looking at yourself in the mirror that's mounted on the wall. People say you're beautiful and it flatters you. You're not vain, but you like your looks. Tonight, your hair is blonde and wavy, cascading gently down your shoulders. Thank God. In the dream, it was brown, wasn't it? You look into your own eyes. Why are you so sad? Tonight is a night for celebration. Your dress is gorgeous and the atmosphere outside is perfect for a good time. You feel sick. You glance behind you at the toilet for a moment, contemplating actually throwing up. Breathe, you say. Everything's fine. It is fine, right? What could possibly be the matter? The dream? No, it can't be the dream. In the dream, you were getting ready at home for one of those gala evenings you always have to go to. You were excited in the dream, not nauseous. But why? It was just another obligation. You suddenly remember, it was him. You were excited because you were going with him. What did he look like? All you really remember are his green eyes and his smile. When you opened your door in the dream, all you really cared about were those eyes that looked at you as if they had always known you and yet were still trying to figure you out. You look at yourself again in the bathroom mirror and try to compose yourself. It was just a dream, you keep telling yourself. Your boyfriend's out there waiting on you and here you are freaking out over some man that you've never met. You go over to the designer basin and splash some water on your face. It's a good thing you don't wear makeup to these kinds of parties. You don't need to. You dry your face, smooth your dress, and walk out. You're walking down the street with your hand in your boyfriend's. His is big and warm, enveloping your dainty fingers with a warm yet firm grip. There are people bustling by. A few of them with cameras, but you don't mind. You're looking around from behind dark glasses, wondering what many of them are thinking. They all have their own lives, completely removed from your own. They're on their path, and you're on yours. But somehow, you've always felt a connection between all the infinite random events of each individual's journey and yours. Your boyfriend asks what's wrong, and you explain, but he doesn't quite get it. He isn't the type. He prefers to think about where he's going to eat next, or where to find another crazy thrill. But that's okay, you think. Everyone has a different way of looking at the world. You pass a bookstore on your left. It's one of those second-hand ones where people trade books more than they buy them. You can see thousands of books, stacked on their sides to save space, all of them looking just a little bit worn. You can imagine the smell of that store and the thrill of what hidden literary gems you might find if given a few hours inside. But you don't go in. Your boyfriend wouldn't really enjoy it. He'd stand at the door waiting for you to buy something and be done. So you walk past. And then suddenly you stop. Your hand breaks away from his and he turns. What's wrong? You rush back to the bookstore's window just to be sure. Your eyes dart around the store, searching every little niche they can find. You could have sworn you'd just seen him again, in the store, the man with those green eyes. He was reading a book and looked up as you walked past. He seemed to recognize you. It happened in an instant, but you were sure that his eyes met yours with that same knowing look. But he isn't there. You feel a hand grasp yours, but it's only your boyfriend. You're being silly, you think, as you explain to your boyfriend that you thought you saw someone you know. As you depart, you get the same sad, nauseous feeling in your stomach that you had a month ago at the party. Are you going mad? You wake up. It's three in the morning and you're sweating. 
you had one of those dreams. And it freaks you out because you don't really get those dreams. You get up and go to the kitchen. Your first thought is a glass of water, but you open the refrigerator and grab a bottle of chocolate milk instead. You also decide that it's the perfect time for some Nutella, so you grab a jar out of the cupboard and a teaspoon. It's been six months since that day at the bookstore, and three months since the breakup. You did the dumping, and hated it, but you're rather enjoying the single life at the moment. You start thinking about the dream. The end was mind-blowing, but how did it start? You were in a room full of people you didn't know, all of them, and yourself doled up to the nines. People were talking to each other, and every now and then, someone would say hello in passing, stopping only to tell you good job or beautiful dress. You remember giving your usual gracious responses, wishing for a familiar, friendly face to come up to you and keep you company. For ages, you stood rooted to the spot, terrified and lonely, waiting for someone to rescue you, and just when you thought that the nightmare would remain, he offered you his arm. You remember this time that he hadn't shaved and his stubble made him seem older, wilder, but his eyes remained gentle and his smile was still full of the life it always has in your dreams. You remember his foolishness on the dance floor, which he did to make you laugh. You remember doing the mamba and the foxtrot, even though he's a terrible dancer, and you remember slowly swaying as everyone around you dissolved into nothing. He kissed you on the dance floor and then suggested that you both get out of there. You spent the rest of the dream roaming the streets of the city before ending up in that situation as the sun rose through the window of his apartment. Why are these dreams so vivid? You can never remember your dreams quite like you recall these, except perhaps for the ones with clowns in them. You hate clowns. You try shake off the wave of sadness and nausea as you go back to bed. It seems like every time you wake up from one of these dreams, you've just broken up with him. But you don't know him. You've never met him, and very possibly he doesn't even exist. But what about the bookstore? Perhaps you should see a shrink or something. You're staring out of the window of a car. The sun is shining, and the endless blue of the sky makes you feel insignificant, but understood. The trees are flashing past as the countryside gets wilder and wilder. Your new boyfriend is driving. You've been with him for three months, and he makes you happy. He turns up the volume of a song that's playing on the radio, and you both start belting out the words, singing and laughing all the way. He's off-key half the time, but you don't really care. It's fun to sing. As the song finishes, you put your hand on his knee and smile. He's taking you up to a secret place of his for a picnic. It's a Sunday afternoon, and it all seems perfect. Almost. As he pulls up to the site of your picnic, you take your hand back and try to calm yourself. You've been here before. In a dream. It's all there, the fast-flowing river with reeds and bulrushes on the other side, the weeping willow with one bough so low it only comes up to your waist, and the large rock just to the left of the willow plastered with graffiti from other couples who have also escaped to this romantic rendezvous. You cautiously walk up to the rock just to make sure it isn't there. In a dream, you wrote on that rock, and so did he. You look for the exact place and sigh, relieved when there is nothing there. Your boyfriend lays out the picnic, and it's perfectly splendid. He's a good listener and knows exactly what you like. He opens a bottle of wine and pours you each a glass. 
As you chat and eat, your boyfriend seems to be picking up that something is amiss. He keeps asking what's wrong, and you keep reassuring him that it's nothing, although you're less convincing each time. What are you supposed to tell him? That every time you look up, you're hoping to see green eyes instead of blue? No. Truth is, this date is almost perfect. It's wonderful, and you should be swooning if it were anywhere but here. It's the dreams. You have at least one a month now, and each of them is magical. When you're in them, you don't want to wake, and when you're awake, you wish you'd never dreamed anything at all. It's like this green-eyed man is ruining all your romantic endeavors without even existing. Maybe it's you. Maybe you're afraid to commit to anyone. Maybe you're terrified that you will never find the one, so your subconscious has invented one just to give you some hope. Maybe God's playing a trick. Maybe you feel alienated from any man you get close to, and so you're wishing for someone who gets you, who fits you like a glove. Maybe, maybe he's out there, just waiting to meet you, having the same dreams and the same issues with lovers. You're at a coffee shop with your closest friend. You've spent the past 45 minutes relating every detail of the dreams that you can remember and all the problems that they're causing. At first, she laughs, especially when you say that you've had a sex dream about a man you've never met or heard of. When you tell her about the bookstore, she asks if you were on acid at the time before realizing that you're actually serious. In the end, she has no answers for you, and her questions get ridiculous. She says that it's stress, that you're working too hard. That is, of course, impossible because you've had far greater workloads in the past before these dreams started. Eventually, she gets bored of talking about the dreams and starts asking you about your boyfriend. You've been together for almost a year now, and it's beginning to get serious. He asked you to move in with him last week, and you still haven't decided. Probably because you don't want to see his face when you tell him that you don't want to. It hurts to hurt people, and you avoid it at all costs. Your friend asks you if you think he's marriage material. You say you don't know. Quite frankly, you prefer not to think about that these days. You're not sure what to do. Your boyfriend really does make you happy, and he treats you right, and the two of you have had only one major fight, which he managed to resolve beautifully. You have no idea what you'd do if he actually proposed. You've just arrived at a restaurant. It's a Michelin star upper crust sort of place, and it sparkles as you hurry up the steps. You're late because you fell asleep reading a book and had another dream. In the dream, you were on a cliff, overlooking the sea, dressed in a gorgeous blue dress that was all the more alluring in the light of the setting sun. There was a bench a little way in from the edge, and you decided to take a seat and wait. After what seemed like ages, he called to you. As you turned, you saw him dressed in a tuxedo beside a beautiful chestnut-colored stallion, smiling and beckoning for you to join him. He took you on a ride along the cliffs until turning and making for the beach below. When you arrived at the beach, he helped you down and took you to a collection of rocks on the shore. As you stood on the largest of these and looked out to the horizon, you remember feeling as though you had been set free. You turned and found him on bended knee, offering you a simple platinum band with a blue diamond, cut square and set neatly and simply upon it. When he proposed, you looked into his green eyes and knew for a fact that he would not try to cage you. In the dream, you accepted. And when you woke, the wave of sudden, cold reality washed over you and shook you so much that you considered cancelling your date with your boyfriend, whom you've been with for almost two years now. 
The restaurant is as opulent and marvelous as its pretentiously French name and fine location suggest. The light is a romantic yellow and very slightly approaching the orange of candlelight. Bright enough to entertain friends and colleagues, but dim enough to create the intimacy needed for a perfectly splendid first date. You remember now that this is the place that your boyfriend took you on your first date. As you approach him, he smiles and gets your chair for you. He asks after the days that you've been away from him and notes that you seem distracted. You say it's nothing, and the conversation continues through starters. It's pleasant enough, and your boyfriend has the charm to keep you engaged, but you find your mind drifting to the dream at every pause or mouthful from his side. You excuse yourself once you've had your first course and stare at yourself in the bathroom mirror. Get a grip, you tell yourself. It was just a dream. But as the memory of it splashes again into your mind, you think of the feeling of freedom that you felt. You look at the door and think of your boyfriend. You're happy with him, aren't you? It's not cheating, you're sure of that, but you still can't tell him of these dreams that plague you. He said on the phone this afternoon that he has something to ask you, and you wash your hands hoping that it isn't what you think it is. As you take a seat, he smiles and picks up the conversation where he left off. After dinner, he pauses for what feels like a minute and gives you a very intense yet tender look. You've seen it once before. On the night, he said, I love you for the very first time. You hesitated before saying it back because at that moment, his blue eyes seemed to flash green. He starts to tell you about how he feels about you and the relationship that you and he have had for the past two years. You smile and laugh as he reminisces of your adventures together, and he gets up after telling you that you are the girl of his dreams. He gets down on one knee before you and pulls out a small black box from his jacket pocket. The ring is a beauty with an elaborate gold band encrusted with about 30 tiny diamonds that surround an enormous square-cut but clear diamond. You gasp for a moment and begin to weep. The entire restaurant is watching, as they do whenever something like this happens. All their romantic desires will want to see you accept, and all of their scandalous sensibilities are begging for a rejection. You look at him, hoping against hope to find green eyes instead of blue, a beard instead of a fresh face, but at each blink your boyfriend is still there and his face is growing more and more nervous with each passing millisecond. You desperately want to say yes, just to, just to please your boyfriend and, and the restaurant. You don't want to hurt him, but you will do much worse later if you agree now. You simply say you can't and flee, leaving your boyfriend shattered on the floor of a posh restaurant. As the months pass, you begin to love and hate the dreams even more. They come and go as they have always done, with no more than one each month. And each dream brings a new adventure that you dwell on till the next. You're also trying to get used to the single life again since your boyfriend rightly assumed that your relationship ended when you exited the restaurant. You've tried to apologize and he has tried to forgive you, but you still cannot offer a reason that satisfies his perfectly justified question of why. You can't tell him that you left him for a dream. <laughs> It seems absurd even to you, but despite your fiercest reasonings and blatant denials, you know that that's the truth. You start seeing a therapist, trying to understand what these dreams mean. It doesn't help. Soon the dreams become more frequent and more intense until, for a week, you dream a dream every night.
You're walking along a crowded street. You're thinking of the past week. It's been both wonderful and terrible with a dream every night. You've been taken around the world, spent days in bed, taken walks everywhere and nowhere, all in your sleep and all with him. You haven't been able to focus on anything and the dreams lavish you when you're asleep and torment you when you're awake. You wish that you could understand what they all meant, what they alluded to. Therapy hasn't helped at all. You're no closer to answers with a constantly growing list of questions. And you're again reminded of how little you know of this man while he knows you intimately. It's ridiculous, to say the least, especially since a part of you seems to be in love with him. That part has been growing against your wishes ever since the breakup eight months ago. You look up just as a piece of folded paper falls from the apartment window above, buffeted along by the wind. As it falls, it catches fire, and as it burns into oblivion, you feel a tremendous weight being lifted from inside you. It, it feels as if you're at an airport saying goodbye to someone you deeply care for. You're the one being left behind. Three years pass without a single dream of him. You're at one of those after parties that you're obliged to attend. It's pleasant enough, but your date has disappeared to go flirt with a boy who's been making eyes at him all night. You're glad that he's gone off, though. You've just come out of yet another breakup, this time after only three weeks, and your date agreed to accompany you more out of courtesy and pity than anything else. Not that he's a grouch about it. You're sure he would be perfectly happy at your side for the entire evening, but this place and these people are not his kind. The music is blaring, and there are people gyrating and cozying up on the dance floor. You love to dance, but not tonight. You're in a somber mood, and the din prompts you to retreat to the quieter parts of this particular establishment, where people are gathered around tables talking about nothing important. You start thinking of your life as it is now. You can't complain much. According to the world, you're even more successful and wealthy now, more well-read and well-traveled. To most minds, you're happy, but for the fact that you haven't been able to keep a man in your life for longer than three months, not since you left an almost forgotten suitor on one knee in a restaurant. Did you make a terrible mistake that night? You've asked yourself that question often, and it remains unanswerable. You're struck from your thoughts when a good friend of yours rushes up and greets you. She says, after grabbing your arm and dragging you behind her, that there is someone she would like you very much to meet at her table. You recognize his name, but barely pay attention as your friend lists his merits. Eventually, you reach the table, where at least 15 people are seated. You recognize most of them. A few of them are friends, and many of them you have worked with or wish to work with in the future. Two old men in particular seated across from where you stand and each in heated conversation with the other are legends in their own right. Seated a little to your right is a man whose face you have not yet seen because he too is discussing something with a curly-haired man who has rather broad shoulders and large biceps. Two seats away from them is a blue-eyed toy boy whom you recognize from a show you once saw on the West End. As you approach, he notices you and interrupts the curly-haired man and his friend, gesturing in your direction. The curly-haired man gets up from his seat and charmingly introduces himself, kissing your hand like they used to in bygone days. Flattered, you respond with a curtsy and notice the other man who has just got up from his seat behind the curly-haired man. You recognize his face vaguely and you're sure you've seen him somewhere. He performs a mock bow as he approaches you, the curly-haired man returning to his seat. As he comes up from his bow, his eyes meet yours with an intrigued, yet knowing, look. His eyes are green, and as he smiles through his beard, the rest of the world vanishes for a moment. For three years, you haven't had a single dream about him, haven't seen his face in your mind's eye, and now he stands before you, as nonchalant as ever. The difference is that this time, he's real 
tangible, flesh and blood. All the dreams rush into your head and vanish in an instant, making you feel giddy. He offers his hand and regards you tenderly. Hello, he says. I was wondering when you'd find me. He winks. You slap him. Hard. You vaguely hear the commotion that you just caused as you do everything in your power not to run as you head to the bathroom. You barely make it to the stall in time to vomit. Your whole body trembles as your mind races and you stare at what happened to dinner as it just floats there. Not your best moment. Behind you, your friend's voice asks if you are okay. You say you're fine, flush, and get up. You walk out from the stall and see yourself in the mirror. You're a hot mess and still shaking. The conversation with your friend is a blur as she helps you fix yourself up. She keeps trying to understand, but you can't bring yourself to tell her why you just went full crazy. Platitudes and mumbled half-answers suffice for now, and the two of you head back to the table. He's gone. When you ask, nobody questions and just points toward the balcony out back that looks out over the city. You find him, standing alone, smoking a joint and staring out at the city. He doesn't look at you as you walk up to him, but you get the feeling that he already knows you're there. Sorry, you say. He laughs and offers you the joint. You take it. Have we met before? He asks. You say nothing. You can't help feeling silly. I thought as much, he says. He still hasn't looked at you, preferring, it seems, the lights of the city. Who are you? You ask as you pass the joint back to him. He takes it from you, smiling without making eye contact. He pulls deep and exhales a plume of smoke straight up into the air. And then he looks at you. In a flash, every dream you've had about this man seems to flash into your head again. And all of a sudden, you're trembling. Again. He steps toward you, slowly. His eyes never leave yours, and he walks up to you, and gently puts one hand on your waist, and the other on your face. He kisses you gently on the cheek, before whispering into your ear, I am whatever, and whoever, you need me to be.